Hello and welcome to this episode of Dog Dale Outdoors Indoors. Yeah, it's that time of year in the UK where it's so dark even during the middle of the day that I'm going to have to film inside for the next couple of weeks. Now you've already probably seen a whole load of videos on top five walking boots and that kind of thing. And the reality is that that's kind of a bit of an oversimplification because there's no such thing as a best walking boot. There's only a best boot for a given individual in a particular set of circumstances. So what I want to do in this video is take you through the key features that I look for when I purchase a new pair of boots and then that will help you evaluate for yourself whether a pair of boots is going to be the best for you in the conditions that you want to walk in. Now the first thing I consider is what is the boot made out of and there are lots of different options out there. Now one of the first choices is material. Now a material based boot is generally a little bit cheaper than an all leather boot. It's also lighter and more breathable. The downside of a material based boot is it generally isn't as waterproof and it certainly isn't as durable either. So you can make a material boot waterproof and you do that by putting a, a waterproof liner in. But as soon as you put a waterproof liner in, just bear in mind that the breathability of that material is then limited by the breathability of the liner itself. Now, another option for the upper is leather. Now, leather is generally more durable and more waterproof than a material based upper, but it certainly isn't as breathable. So that is something you need to think about. Now, of the leathers, there are three main types. There is suede and suede is the most breathable of all the leathers, but certainly the, the least waterproof. On the opposite end of the scale, you've got a finished leather like Amphibio, which is the most waterproof leather, uh, but that is also the least breathable. And then finally, you've got something in the middle called New Book, which is finished leather that has been sanded down. And that is, you know, breathability and waterproofness between suede and finished leather. Now, one thing to be aware of is if you go for a finished leather boot, you don't actually need a waterproof liner like a Gore-Tex liner. And the reason for that is the leather itself will make the boot waterproof. Now, when I say waterproof, what I actually mean is very, very highly water resistant. And that's the same whether it is a, a Gore-Tex liner or all leather, because eventually both of those will let in water. The only way to stop that is if you go for something like a rubber welly. So manufacturers will actually try and combine materials to get the best of both leather and material in a single boot. Now, this is the Higgs boot. It's the Higgs Combat Liability High. And this is issued to the British Army. And, you know, it's mainly leather. So you've got leather all around the kind of high wear areas where you need that durability, especially sort of the ankle and all the ankle supports up here. But you've also got a really nice kind of big mesh panel here that added breathability and one of the tongue as well. And, you know, if it's been implemented properly and it's been done to sort of save weight and add breathability rather than save costs, this is actually a really good compromise. If you have decided to get a pair of boots made from a finished leather, the second feature I always recommend you look for is that that boot is made from a single piece of leather around the bottom because that makes it more waterproof. We have stitching, that's always a weak spot for water ingress and also just generally a weakness in the boot as well that could fail over time. So if you look at this boot, this is the Altberg Defender. This is again, this is another military shoe boot, but it's very high quality. Uh, if you look, start from, from the heel here, it goes all the way along, along. It's just one single piece of leather. So there's no kind of additional stitching around the bottom at least for water to get into. Now you'll notice on the heel, there is a separate patch of leather here. And the reason for this is that's where the two sides underneath here are kind of sewn together. Um, so they put this patch over the top to sort of protect that, uh, that, that seam, make it more waterproof. Uh, and actually, it can give strength to the boot as well. So that's why that's there. I find with cheaper boots, they often do have additional stitching. And the reason for that is it, it's cheaper to make that way because you can use smaller pieces of leather and therefore there's less wastage. Uh, but it does mean that they aren't as waterproof, unfortunately. Now that said, you, know, you can get some really expensive pairs of boots that also have that additional stitching. Now this is a pair of Mindles or Mendels, I'm not sure how you say it. And these are the Bhutan MFS. They're about 220 pounds, these boots, they're not cheap. Uh, but they do have additional stitching here. And that does make for a weak spot for the water to get into. What I would say about these boots is these are actually made from a new book leather as opposed to amphibio leather, like the old big defenders. And that leather is nowhere near as waterproof. And because of that, the stitching doesn't make much difference because the leather itself isn't as waterproof as, as the, the finished leather. So in order to sort of get around that, what they've done at Mendel is they've actually put a waterproof lining in. So this one is Gore-Tex, you can see the label there, but this one has a, a Gore-Tex lining that it has to rely on to make these boots waterproof 
with this additional stitching, while in the up bag, which uses a really high quality amphibio leather, it doesn't need the waterproof lining because there's no extra stitching and the leather itself is, is really waterproof. Now the third feature I recommend you always look for in a pair of boots is how much ankle support it gives you. And when we talk about ankle support, what we're actually saying is how much lateral stability it gives you. So your foot, stop your foot bending side to side this way. Now, the reason that's important is because if you're out walking about and you're, you roll your foot sideways, it can cause what's called hyperextension injury or a sprain. And that can stop you walking. And if you're somewhere remote, that can actually cause quite a lot of problems. You can get an idea of how much ankle support a pair of boots is going to give you by looking at the leather at the ankle area. So if we take the Altbergs again, and you know, if we go from you know, the bottom of the sole here up to this part of the leather here, because this is the, the stiff part of the leather, this is what gives you support. This bit's very soft and doesn't. You can see that this is actually quite low on this boot. And what I found is this boot actually doesn't give me that much ankle support. And I have rolled my feet in these, not to the point I've been injured, uh, but I've definitely kind of stumbled over and almost fallen while I've been wearing them. But compare that to the Mendels, what you can see is again, we'll go from the bottom, this runs all the way up, the stiff leather, all the way up to the top to about here. So straight away you can see there's a lot more support there because this whole area gives you support and it, the top isn't really just doesn't really bend that much. So I do get a lot more ankle support in these boots. Now just because a pair of boots offers you better ankle protection, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're a better boot. It's about finding the right balance of flexibility and rigidity uh, to meet your needs. Now the Michael boot, you know, they offer more protection, but they have been designed specifically for walking in a straight line. While the Defenders, on the other hand, who offer less protection, they've been designed for soldiers in combat, you know, where you need to run, you need to jump, you need to change direction quickly. And for my purposes, when I work at walking the dogs, I found the Altberg Defenders are actually a lot more comfortable to wear and probably suit my needs a lot better than the Mindles do. Another consideration is if you're going to carry a heavy load or you're a heavier person, it's generally recommended that you have more ankle support because it protects that area, which is you know traditionally a weak spot when you've got a heavy load bearing on top of it. Now there is an argument that you should walk without any sort of ankle protection at all because if you're doing it regularly, you actually strengthen your ankles and you know that will sort of lead to less injuries just through being stronger. And that's a really valid argument. I think it's especially valid if you're a young sort of 20 to 30 year old who's doing walking regularly and can keep on top of that strength and fitness. If you're a bit older and or you're not walking quite so regularly, bear in mind it's going to be like every other muscle. If you don't stay on top and exercise it regularly, you will lose that strength so you might benefit from additional support. Now the fourth feature I recommend you think about when you're buying a pair of boots is the sizing system. And this is something a lot of people overlook, but actually the fit of the boots is the most important thing in determining how comfortable it is. And this is why, you know, you don't get a best pair of boots, you only get a best pair of boots per person because it's how a particular shape of boot will fit an individual. Now, some manufacturers will only do whole sizes and that's fine as long as your foot fits that size. If you're in between, I would definitely recommend choosing a manufacturer that does half sizes. And most you know, quality boot makers will make their boots in half sizes and quite often they'll do them in different width fittings as well. Just to highlight how important the sizing system is, I wanna show you two different pairs of very similar boots. Now this is the Altberg Warrior. Now this is the privately bought version of the Defender. This actually came out before the Defender did, and these were never issued by the army. Now these are made to Altberg's own sizing system, and that is, includes half sizes, and it comes in five different width fittings, you know, from extra small to extra wide. And this particular pair of boots is eight and a half wide. And these fit me like slippers. I love these boots so much. Now I'm gonna compare them to the Defenders, actually show you the Defenders at the same time. So you can see it is essentially the same boot. Uh, the Defender's a little bit lower and has a different lacing system. But the key difference in the Defender is this is made to the MOD's own sizing system rather than Altberg's. And that doesn't include half sizes. So this only comes in whole sizes, and if your feet are in between, you get provided a spacer, which you put inside the boot. It takes up some of the volume inside the boot, but obviously it doesn't change the overall length. Um, now what I found is the eight and a half wide in the Altberg Warriors, perfect for me. 
The closest I could get in the defenders is an eight large. The nine, which is a little bit too long. Um, and these are okay, you know, they, they fit me, they work. Um, but in terms of pure comfort, they are not as comfortable as the, as the Warriors are. And what you can probably tell just through looking at them is the Warriors get a lot more use because they are quite essentially a much more comfortable fit, even though this is the same boot. Now the fifth feature I always look for when I purchase a pair of boots is the lacing system. And I know this sounds like a really odd one because nobody pays attention to the laces. But actually, you know, how you lace your boots makes a big difference to how securely it feels on your feet and to your overall comfort because it'll stop your boots rubbing and that kind of thing. So the lacing system is really important. Now, most walking boots, uh, you know, at the front forefront, they'll have these kind of D-rings here. And these D-rings are good because, you know, it allows the, the laces to pull through very quickly. It doesn't take much friction. They just, they just come across really nicely. And then on a quality pair of walking boots, you also have a locking system here. Now this locking system is really important because it maintains the tension in the forefront of the boot. So I'll just describe how this works. So when you get your pair of boots on, you've usually got to loosen your laces. Now, if you don't have this locking system, what happens is you end up loosening all the laces, you put your foot in, and then in order to get the right tension, you have to pull this, this forefront lace, then you pull the next one, and then you pull the next one, and you work your way back up to the boot until all you, you know, you've got the tension there and it just takes a couple of minutes and it's a bit of a faff if you've got the locking system you set that tension once and then when you want to take your boot off uh, you just undo the top part of the boot and this stays locked in place take your boot off put it back on and then all you need to do then is pull the top part of the laces and you don't need to worry about retensioning all, all towards the bottom so it's really really a good feature to have now, as you go up towards the top of the boot, there's a couple of different styles you can have. Now, this one is the Alpberg Defender. So this is the military issue version, made to LED standards. And this has a closed eyelet. And these are, these are okay, you know, they work. You just have to pull the laces tight and it takes a bit of force to do it. Uh, you can eventually get them tight enough. Sometimes you need to kind of, again, do this pulling, pulling thing that, that you need to do, but it, it works. The other option you can have is what's on the Altberg Warriors. And this is what's on most civilian boots. And these are actually uh, open hooks instead. I hope you can see them. And rather than pull through, the way it actually works is you take the lace and you simply hook it, you hook it around like this. And then you pull it tight. And although that seems like, like it's going to be harder, with a bit of practice, you can actually get a lot more tension in your boot very quickly. And it's actually easier to tie your boots with the open hooks than it is with, with the closed eye that I find. Now the sixth feature I always pay attention to when I purchase a pair of boots is the sole. Now the sole is made up of three parts. You've got inside the boot, you've got the inner sole, or sometimes called the footbed. And I don't pay too much attention to that because that is completely removable. Uh, and if I want to replace it with something else, it's just a question of pulling it out and putting a new one in. But what I do pay attention to is the midsole. And that's the kind of strip of kind of brown rubber here. And this is designed to give you a little bit of impact protection. Now you don't want anything too kind of squidgy here, or you know, too spongy. Now if you think of a pair of trainers, you know, they are quite spongy, but that's because trainers have been designed to you know, protect you from high impact running, um, but they've only been designed to protect you for about 300 miles. A pair of boots is typically designed to last between 600 and 1,000 miles. So obviously it has to be a lot firmer to survive. So you, you don't want anything too spongy there. Just something with a little bit of uh, impact protection is all you're looking for. Then you've got the outer sole. And what I find is most outer soles are absolutely fine. Uh, a key thing to look out for is if you go for a cheap pair of shoes, sometimes the rubber compound they use isn't very durable. And it'll work fine, but it'll just wear down much, much faster than a quality sole. So do be aware of you know cheap things uh, because they tend not to be as good. Um, also look at things like how dense that the, the lug pattern is. For example, these have got really nice thick lugs, which will really sort of stop you from gripping, they stop from falling, sorry. Uh, but if you've got big spaces in between them, it puts more pressure on the individual lugs so they, so they will wear down faster. Some patterns have really dense lugs and they tend to be a bit more hard wearing, I found, but they may um, not clean the mud as well. So if you're working, if you're working through lots of mud, 
a dense pattern is more hard wearing but will you know get stuff you know it'll, the, all the mud will stick to it and you become caked in mud while if you go for a, a larger pattern like this this will be less hard wearing but it will clear the mud and you won't get like loads of mud building up on your boots and the seventh and final feature i always look for when i purchase the boots is the weight now the weight makes a huge difference and because you know that you wear them on the end of your legs which are like big levers you really do feel a difference between a heavy pair of boots and a light pair of boots and they vary tremendously now in general you know lighter boots are better but you know in order to get that lighter boot you usually have to deal with some kind of compromise maybe it's a loss of waterproofness a loss of durability maybe they aren't as tall so it's about finding the right balance uh, but if you can't find a lighter pair of boots with all things being equal go for the lighter pair because you really do feel the difference so once again, I hope you thought that was useful and see you next time.